Today on the John Ackerberg Show, North Africa has a population of more than 273 million people, about 3.3% of the world's entire population. But how many people in these seven countries have no Bibles in their first language and know little or nothing about Jesus? And how many people need an audio Bible because they are illiterate? Morgan Jackson, Vice President of Faith Comes By Hearing, knows the answers to these problems. Join us to hear what he says on this edition of The John Ackerberg Show. Welcome to our program. I'm John Ackerberg, and my honored guest is the Vice President of Faith Comes By Hearing, who is working with two million national churches overseas. And what he is doing is he is bringing the Bible to people in audio. There's 7,140 languages in the world, and when we first started this about 10, 11 years ago, the fact is that he asked me, how many uh, of those languages do not have a Bible in their language? I said, how would I know? He says, there's 4,000 languages that have no Bible in their language. And I said, what are you doing about it? And he told me, and I want you to tell the folks what you are doing. What is Faith Comes By Hearing all about and why we've we been doing this for, now this will be going on our 11th year. Uh, when, when we met John in your office and I told you there was that many languages, we had 640 languages That's recorded. Right. Today we have 2,200 languages that are recorded. We have scripture available for, for I think it's 6.8 billion people. We have scripture in their mother tongue. So what we do is, is we have 50 recording teams around the world, nationals. Mm -hmm. So when Wycliffe or a Bible Society, Seed Company, uh, Word for the World is done with the translation, sometimes it takes 30, 35 years to be done. We send a team into the village, they convert a mud hut into a studio, they take 25 voices, they do a drama recording. One voice can have eight or different parts. So one is the narrator, then that voice can be the blind man in John, Jesus, son of David, have mercy, be an angel in Revelation. Whoa, whoa. We had music and effects. Then when it's done, we put it on what we call a proclaimer. Now the Africans love this because they say it drinks the sun and up to a thousand people can hear it. And when you bring the word of God into a village in the mother tongue and they thought God forgot them, People start laughing and crying, ah, God speaks our language. That thing doesn't need electricity, why? Well, it's also made out of what football helmets are made of, so it's tough. The solar panel will recharge the batteries, the batteries recharge 3,000 times. And that's unbelievable. Right. Then, if you don't see the sun, today in Chattanooga there's no sun, you crank it for 10 minutes and it'll play for 40. And the kids love doing that, although yeah. the solar is the, the main one. Yep. This is up to a thousand, but oftentimes they prefer this one because it's easier to carry. And this little dude can be heard by up to 300, 300 people. 300 people easily. Same thing, solar, doesn't have the hand crank. 3,000 recharge and it carries four languages, which oftentimes in Africa is important because you need the trade language, you need the business language. Now in Africa, in the northern part of Nigeria, if you come with a book, uh, you're going to get killed. In the northern part of Nigeria, you got 100 million people up there in the north. And if you have a book, the fact is, and especially a Bible, you're toast. You're done. The southern part, another 100 million people, you could do it down there because you've got mostly Christians down in the southern part. You have a different religion, three different religions basically up in the northern part. And they don't want that at all. Well, the, the thing is, is Nigeria is one out of five Africans, sub-Saharan Africans are from Nigeria, so most populous country. I just had a team go to Africa, and they went out to see the impact that your donors have been having. Thank you. I mean, you've been giving. Yep. When we first started this program, I know you were losing money like mad. You're an evangelist. You've, you've been on the mission field, and so you were putting us on the air. And after the first two years, you were like, I, I can't do this. I give you a rough estimate is that uh, the very first program that we did this with all of the uh, television equipment, with the editing, and with the airtime, cost us about $600,000. We lost that. 
600,000 bucks for just, I think we did four programs. Yep. So I thought, well, we'll get some donors, we'll get some help. Because I believed in what you were doing. I think this is the way we get the gospel out. So the next year we came back, we lost a million five hundred and forty thousand dollars, and if you put editing on top of that, it was like about a million seven. I think next year I went to a different country to <laughs> preach, and I thought, well, I don't want to lose two million bucks here. And the third year we came back, and I said, give me the lowest price you possibly can on these proclaimers, because I said we've got to do, figure out something on this airtime, and. We only lost $450,000 that year, so with 150 and you know, five, 600,000, we were getting close to three million bucks that we were losing. And uh, so the fifth year I told the Lord, I said, I believe in what Morgan and Faith Comes By Hearing is doing. They're getting the word of God out where it's not going in the world, but Lord, we can't keep this up unless you do something. And it was the fifth year that the Lord came to the program and the people finally understood what we were talking about. Jesus said, all power has been given to me in heaven and earth. And then he said, go and make disciples of all the nations, yeah. baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and teach them all the other commands that I have given to you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. That's right. Okay? He's going to ask us when we get to heaven, what did you do with my command? I died so you could present the good news that your sins could be forgiven and people could go to heaven. No matter what their sin was, I can forgive it because I gave my blood for that when I was on the cross. God took all of the sins of the world, put them on Jesus, and he paid the sacrificial price that we all deserve. Now, it's a gift if you accept it, mm -hmm. but you also have the right to turn it down. Right. I don't want to look at God, a holy God, and tell him why I turned down his gift of him giving his only son to pay for my sin. And I thought, this is what we're supposed to be doing. And the Christians, you folks out there, you got it. And so we were able to pay for the airtime. We were starting to be able to pay for uh, all of the editing that had to be done. Every program that you see us do, it takes us one week to edit that program. So if we do eight programs, it takes our guys eight weeks to edit that program before we can air it. All right? And that costs money. All right? Well, and, and that's something that I really appreciate. And, and I think your understanding was half the world's population and in, in Nigeria over 70 80 percent of the population would never be reached with the printed page until the audio and the Christians in Nigeria are suffering the greatest violence last year alone people don't know this yeah open doors looks around the world to say where's the most persecution and 82 percent of the people killed for their faith were killed in Nigeria last year say that again 82 percent of the martyrs people who were killed for their Christians. faith last year were killed in Nigeria so my team went because you your donors have been funding a tremendous amount of programs throughout Nigeria especially in the northern part. We've been recording. We've got over 100 languages that have been recorded. Yeah, we've got 4,211,198 people in listening groups in Africa That's because right. our people have given. So the people, they were catching Africa, but the fact is the need is more than just Nigeria. But well, Nigeria but I, is important. Yeah, I just want to, I, I want to tell your donors thank you, but I want to tell them what they've, what they've been accomplishing. Nigeria holds a special place in my heart. I sent my team there to do video and to see what was going on. And when I was getting reports back, they one of the evenings, they had four armed guards with them when they were out in the yep. field. And one of the nights they were recording and they got a, a, a broken tire and they had a couple things and they got filming and they got late and their, the nationals were getting really uncomfortable and nervous, but my team wasn't. Well, they should have been. They finally got on the road. You don't get on those roads in the back areas at night. And they were in the duskish area. Everybody was nervous. And they were like, why is everybody nervous? The very next day, there was a news report that on that road, a bus had been stopped and all the people had been robbed and people killed. And then they understood the nervousness. 
Now, my first visit to Nigeria, <laughs> I arrived at night at the airport. Nobody was there to meet me. I was alone. It was the first time we'd ever been in Nigeria. I was the international apartment. I got in a taxi. The taxi driver, two big Nigerians, pulled it over. Police officer guy. Two hours of threatening. Finally, I gave him a bribe. Got to my hotel room. An hour later, I was robbed in my hotel room with no money. <laughs> and the phones didn't work. Two trips later, I'm set to go. And people were praying, and people come to me and said, the Lord's given me this scripture. You need to be prepared to suffer and die. Two people. Another person said, I just saw a vision of you running. And God said, you don't carry any, take anything more than you can carry and run with. So I went. Now, I'm telling my wife. She tells her kids, Dad may not come back. Um, now, she wept when she put me on the plane the first time. But this time, God told us that even though that warning was there, I was to go. When I went, I found 13 pastors fasting and praying for me. Didn't think about it. Whole trip, nothing happens. I said, can I meet with those pastors? I meet with them. I gave them the scriptures, the words that I had, that I had come preparing to die or suffer. They say, you don't know it. The reason we were fasting for you is before you came, we got a word in our village that a white man was going to come. And when he came, he was going to die. We prayed about it. A woman had a dream that an older white man came, my dad has a white beard, white hair, to comfort us at the death of the younger white man. You were the only white man we knew. So we were going to warn you, and the Holy Spirit said no. So we didn't know that you were coming, thinking you might die. Well, what happened is that actually blew open the doors to the Bible societies because they had missionaries and people coming, but it was business. And when they knew I had gotten hepatitis A in Malawi, they knew I'd been evacuated out of Zaire, they knew I'd been robbed in Nigeria, and now they knew I'd come knowing the dangers. I knew the dangers, and I'd prepared to die. My wife had sent me, my dad had sent me. And suddenly the doors were open. They said, these people are serious. They're willing to die to see the Word of God. Because the Nigerians are not just willing to die, they are dying. They are dying. And when my team went, they went and they were seeing a village that was destroyed. They meet with a group of widows that were sitting around listening to the scripture. And when you looked into their eyes, you know, the hopelessness. And one of the women was just saying, you know, it's the Fulani people, these herdsmen, that their religious instructors and teachers are telling them to kill the Christians. So they said, we saw a village being attacked, and so we began to get prepared. But as we started hearing the attack, you know, we were told, flee. And I grabbed my children and I ran. But she said, I couldn't find my husband. And I found that my husband and my brother had confronted and tried to stop or slow down the warriors, and they had been cut into pieces and were killed. And she said, my home is destroyed, the village is taken over, my husband is dead, my brother is dead, what will I do? Yeah. But what they were finding is they met a man whose family had been killed, and he's saying, this word of God caused me to forgive them. This is what we need to take to those people. Now, they met another man who he is taking the word of God out. He's got one proclaimer. He goes to 11 different villages with one proclaimer. Each village gets to gather and hear. But he says, so many people want to hear that are not in those 11 villages that once a week I open up a time in this public space for people to come. And people will come from hours on motorcycles walking to be able to gather to hear. Because people, as they listen, are healed, are delivered from demons, are seeing and hearing Jesus speak their language. And the word is going out. So it literally is like when Jesus was on the earth and people heard that he was healing and delivering. People would come by the thousands. And he said, they're gathering around a proclaimer. And he's looking at our team saying, why can't each one of the 11 villages have their own? Why do all these other people have to come all these hours? Why can't I have one per village? And so what we're telling them is, this is why we're here. That's we're exactly here to right. get these pictures so <laughs> our boss, Morgan Jackson, can sit on with John Ankerberg That's right. and tell them that people are hungry. Now, they brought back, they didn't take this image, but they pulled it off of one of the channels. They had one of the religious e leaders in that area talking about the Fulani people, and he was holding up an audio Bible, and he said, we have villages now that are no longer saying their Arabic prayers. 
because now these people don't speak Arabic. They don't even know what they're praying. Their religious book is in Arabic. They don't understand it because they can't read or write. But they're murderous because of what they've been taught. Well, now they're hearing the Word of God in Fulani. And the, he sang, this is the spiritual leader, saying whole villages are no longer saying their prayers and they're following the teachings on this audio they've recorded. The Christians have recorded the Bible in audio in Fulani. So I want you to be aware of what they're doing. <laughs> and so we have these Fulani believers that are going out. Now, if they come with a Bible, they can't read it, one. But the minute this printed Bible, they're dead. When they come with the black box, and they say, what's on the black Everybody wants to know. They just go in the village, they push the button, and out of it comes the Word of God in Fulani. Now, you have to remember, the biggest impact is Matthew 1, <laughs> the genealogy. Right. Because in their tradition, Jesus is one of their prophets. They go, all of their tradition goes back to Abraham. So when it opened up and says, this is Jesus, the son of Abraham, the son of David. Abraham was the father. Boom, 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 14 generations. I mean, the people listen with intently, and then they look at each other and go, oh. And then they hear the story of Jesus' divine voice. Well, that's one of the stories in their tradition. Yeah. Okay, this is our prophet. But then as they listen, Jesus declares Himself to be the Son of God. They get healed and delivered as they listen to the stories. And He begins to start preaching things, turn the other cheek, love your enemy, <laughs> things that completely destroy everything they currently believe and do. But as they begin to follow the teachings of Jesus, they get to John 3. And John 1, 2, and 3 is when it all comes together. Yep. Because when Nicodemus comes in the middle of the night and he says, we know you're a prophet. Well, that's what they're saying. You're not the Son of God, you're a prophet. He goes, no, 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 unless you are born again. <laughs> they're like, what do you mean born again? Can we get back in our mama? And he's saying, no, unless you're born of water and of spirit, you cannot go in, enter into heaven. You know, the Son of Man didn't come to judge and condemn the world. He came to save the world. God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. That you won't perish, that you'll have a turn. And so in that thing, then he declares in John, I am God. I am the Son of God. And so you'll have the community do this. And one of the community, the only guy that didn't come to faith in Christ was the witch doctor. Now, it seems weird that you have a witch doctor in this kind of faith tradition. But their faith is just a veneer over traditional. Right. And so whole villages are coming to faith in Christ. We have all these oral people groups. There's 200 languages three years ago that had no translations and nobody was planning to do translations. You and I have talked about we now are doing oral Bible translation. Right. The translation groups, Wycliffe and others said, we have these 2,000 languages now. We don't have to go to print. We can just go audio to audio. People can hear, and Africans speak five, six, seven languages. They can hear it and then we can do a translation orally. Today, we have 140 translations in two years that have started in Nigeria. And all of these villages, the, we, my team went there. These young guys, they had 40 proclaimers. The whole, all the chiefs, the king of the tribe, everybody's there. Yep. And they're saying, this will rescue us. It, our soul is our language, and these people are trying to take our language. This will rescue us, please. Please bring more, every village, every yeah. community will hear. But yeah. I got 140 of them. So that's where I'm like, there is a revival going in Nigeria. And yeah. that's why the devil is risen up. And that's why 82% yeah. of Christians have been killed there. Yeah. So you've got the door open. You've got persecution. You've got some of the kings of these different areas that are saying, please, can we have more of these? You got 100 million people in the north. You got 100 million people in the south. And I'm saying, they're waiting for these audio proclaimers. <laughs> I have to tell you, I just love it. But I have to thank you. I mean, I know this has been a sacrifice. It's been a long journey. But your donors have so faithfully given and allowed us. And so the problems I have with everybody wanting audio Bibles, you've helped create. So I'm just telling you and your donors, yeah. this is not just my problem. Well, people have been waiting for this time for <laughs> oh, you to come back. Man. and. The fact is they've been saving their money, 
Okay? okay. So tell them about the fact that we have, if a person gives one, we got another donor that's going to give one more for them, and we've got a third donor this time wow. that's going to give one more. So you give one, you give three. Now, in Nigeria, on average, easily 90 people will be listening to one and four groups will be formed around one. Oftentimes they like the biggest one because it can reach up to a thousand. But that means 270 people were here. Now remember, when we're talking about people provide, that $500 not only covers the cost of the proclaimer, but all the costs that we talked about earlier, your right. broadcast costs, your editing, all those costs. We couldn't do this program without but, that. But it covers that cost and the cost of a proclaimer. But because of the match, then three devices will go proclaimers. Now, they call them the black box. They call them the good radio. So even some of your donors have said, I want one of those good radios or whatever that black box is. That's what they call them over there as well. So they give two, they actually give six. You give, they give four, mm -hmm. they give, you know, four, they're, four, they're and four. 12. And so yeah. 12 different villages will hear the word of God. Well, not 12, because three times that, 36, actually 12, 48 different listening groups will That's be there. That's exactly so, right. Anyways, when you see the impact in these countries and you watch people who are illiterate, cannot receive the Word of God any other way, and they hear the Word of God, they're transformed, but then their passion is to take it out. And people want to come in here. And so we have an open door in one of the hardest to reach places in the world. And so if your donors can help, yep. we're in a place where we can use all the help they can use. Yep. Next week we're going to another spot that is very needed and uh, people won't believe what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about West Africa and we're going to talk about uh, Togo and Benin. And the fact is, is that uh, in one of those spots is where we got voodoo. Mm -hmm. And we're going to go to the home of voodoo and we're going to talk with Christians and we're going to talk about what God's doing in spite of voodoo coming out of that whole area. How God's Word is coming into That's the right. gates of hell. So I hope people will stick with us because we got a lot of stories to tell. Amen. Well, folks, today is a very special day because we have two very generous donors who are burdened by the great need to reach the millions of people in North Africa and desperately want to help us. So much so that they have each promised to match every audio Bible you give today. Now here's how it will work. If you give a gift of $500 for one audio Bible, a special donor will match your gift by adding one more audio Bible for a total of two audio Bibles. Then another special donor will add one more audio Bible to your gift, making it a total of three audio Bibles. Your three audio Bibles will reach 270 people who have never heard about Jesus and 135 of them will accept Christ. If you give a gift of $1,000 for two audio Bibles, your gift will be matched by our two donors and you'll really be giving six audio Bibles, which will reach 540 people and win 270 people to Christ. And if you give a gift of $2,000 for four audio Bibles, listen to this, your gift will be matched by both of our donors and you'll be giving 12 audio Bibles, which will reach 1,080 people and win 540 people to Christ. Now, because of our special offer today, if you wish to give a larger gift of $10,000 or $50,000 to reach a lot of people, this is the day to do it. Because however many audio Bibles that you give, they will also be matched by our two special donors. Then, we also want to provide micro SD cards for people who can insert them into any cell phone and immediately hear the whole New Testament in their own language. If you give a gift of $30 for one micro SD card, your gift will be matched by both donors and you can provide three micro SD cards for people and their friends who can share them. If you give a gift of $60, your gift will be matched and you can provide six micro SD cards for six people to share the gospel via their phones with their friends. Then third, if you want to provide one micro SD card and one Bible stick 
for a gift of $100, your gift will be matched by both donors and you will provide three micro SD cards and three Bible sticks. Now, what are Bible sticks? They are personal digital players that are battery powered and come loaded with an audio Bible and earphones so that people can listen to the Bible privately. Both the micro SD cards and the Bible sticks are in great demand in the refugee camps. Then after all the audio Bibles are sent out, and our airtime bills for Morgan's TV programs are paid. If anything is left, we try to help pay for airtime for stations in the Ukraine, Russia, and Israel. Finally, this season, if you would like to provide one or more of these audio Bibles on behalf of a loved one, we will send you an honor card that you can personalize and give to your loved ones that explain how an audio Bible was given on their behalf. It's a wonderful Christmas gift. But please remember, if God leads you to provide one, two, three, or four, or more of these audio Bibles to reach people who have never had a Bible in their own language, all your gifts will be matched by our two donors. And you may provide them right now by calling us at 1-800-805-3030. That's 1-800-805-3030. You may call that same number any day this week, 24 hours a day. Or right now, you may give your gift at our website at jashow.org, where we have a secure place for you to give your gift. That's jashow.org. Then, if you live in Canada, would you please call us at 1-866-746-5803? That's 1-866-746-5803. Or you can give your gift at our Canadian website at jashow.ca. That's jashow.ca. And when we receive your gift, we will send you a receipt and a personal thank you. And folks, I believe the Lord's going to use your gift to reach many people who have never heard the gospel. <music>